Nisfas is fucked. The National Students Financial Aid Scheme is supposed to provide deserving students who did well in matric the financial aid to help them overcome their impoverished circumstances and be able to afford to go to university to get the higher education qualifications that will allow them to one day get good jobs in literally the hardest job market in the whole world with the highest level of not just unemployment but youth unemployment but year after year decade after decade at this point there has been what has to be described as a systemic failure from the South African Education Department and every other stakeholder to help these kids. And just this last week, the CEO of NISFAS was fired for a 47 billion rands tender scandal. And what upsets me so much is that's supposed to be huge news, but because of how terrible NISFAS has been for so long and because of how many millions of young South Africans it has failed, that doesn't even feel like a remarkably big moment for NISFAS. All I'm going to try and figure out with you today through all of the mess is how did we get here and what the fuck is going on? Because this is supposed to be the ticket to the future for South Africa and its people and it is nowhere. So this is the issue with NISFAS. As always, if you've got a second, please do subscribe to our channel. It helps us keep the lights on as we try to answer these big, messy questions about South African news. It seems like every single year there are student protests at universities and colleges across South Africa. Every single year, Higher Education Minister Bladen Zamande comes out and half blames the universities and half blames the students and fully absolves himself of responsibility. And every single year, students can't afford accommodation, can't afford food, can't afford textbooks. They protest to pretty much no change and no help. The universities try to help, but don't have the resources and capacity to do so. Everybody suffers. And then the year's over and the next year it happens again. And at the center of nearly every one of these storms is the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NISFAS. It was set up many years ago, technically in the early 90s, but by the late 90s, it was the main government mechanism to provide loans to deserving students who did well in school to be able to go to university and study a degree to qualification and then be able to pay back the loans to NISFAS. That was the idea. And NISFAS was crucial, as is government funding to universities, to make universities possible and make it more possible for more South Africans to be able to realistically aim to go to university, not from a marks perspective, but from a cost perspective. So NISFAS would arrange a bunch of tests to figure out per student how much money they were willing to loan them, right? So things like household income was taken into consideration, as well as number of dependents in that household and also on the student and then the family cost of living. And that created what was an EFC, an expected family contribution. So NISFAS would take your EFC and combine it with your academic results and put that together to give you a total score and that's how it will be judged whether or not you'd be allocated funds and how much funds you'd be allocated. Students on NISFAS would have to pass at least 50% of their courses per year to continue to get funding but there were greater performance incentives than that. Basically a portion of your loan fee you wouldn't have to repay would be converted into a bursary if you performed really well on whatever you were studying. And to be clear, NISFAS's problems aren't all about funding. A lot of the criticism of governments in South Africa is often, oh, but they're just not spending enough. But interestingly, South Africa actually spends an enormous amount of money. The problem, the disaster, as with so much of South Africa's government-based work, is the implementation. In 2014, 186,000 students were being supported by NISFAS. That is up by 100,000 from the 86,000 who were being supported in 2002. And the NISFAS payout in 2014 was 6.97 billion rand, up from 733 million rand in 2002. But NISFAS clearly wasn't working, even though the budget increased above the rate of inflation every single year, many students were still dropping out. Many students were unable to repay their loans and NISFAS was crippled by an unending mess of late fees and confusion about when and how much money they were able to deliver to students.
And then Roads Must Fall happens. It started at UCT, but it was clearly a breaking point for many, many students of color across South Africa. And that is why it became a worldwide news headline as black students and others were trying to express why it was so hard to be at higher education institutions in South Africa, why it felt so alienating and what all the extra challenges facing them were. And then we went from Roads Must Fall in fees must fall, where students across South Africa took on universities and the government. They said, it is literally unaffordable for us to try and pursue higher education, to try and get the opportunities that we need to get jobs and have sustainable futures in South Africa. We are literally not being given the conditions we need to make a success of university. And so the call was make higher education free. There were years of protests, there was blame hurling, there were commissions of inquiry, there was violence, there was threats. And then at the very end of his presidency in 2017, President Zuma said that they would make higher education free. An extremely convenient time to make outrageous binding promises when you're right at the end of your presidency and you don't have to do anything about it. But one of the first things that President Ramaphosa, his successor did was say, no, we accept that commitment, we're gonna hold it up. And so so NISFAS fundamentally changed. Firstly, they did away with loans completely and converted the entire system to bursaries. But that didn't mean everybody who'd already taken out a loan and owed NISFAS and sometimes universities tens, hundreds of thousands of rands, they still had to complete those loans. It's just people from 2018 who were now on NISFAS bursaries. And the government said that they would find the money to just provide the money, no requirement of any money given back. The students who would get free higher education were those who came from households with a combined annual income of less than 350,000 rand. And then if you came from a household that earned more than that, you would get NISFAS bursaries covering some of your tuition in line with need and also academic performance. And now in the last handful of years with bursaries, NISFAS has continued to fail students through not providing reliable, adequate funding on a regular basis and not providing decent communication. And so again, just like before the change, all of these students are now vulnerable to a missed payment, to money not arriving, to a technical glitch or screw up derailing their entire year, their ability to eat. NISFAS's entire digital and payment infrastructure is radically unreliable. Sibungile Mani went to Walter Lusisulu University and in 2017, instead of being given the 1,400 rand a month she was supposed to get as a beneficiary, she was given 14 million. She tried to spend it all very quickly, got through about 800,000 rand of it, got arrested, account froze, and she's now in jail for five years. And this video isn't about the debate about who's mainly at fault there, although she did definitely spend money that she knew wasn't due to her. But like, just think about how inept and broken and insane a digital payment system and a digital infrastructure you have to have for that mistake to even be possible 14 million rand instead of 1,400 rand. It's indicative of such a radical systemic crisis that let's just look at 2023 now. Let's just look at what's happened in 2023 to see the consequence of this never ending disaster. In February 2023, a report came out showing that student debt in South Africa is still ballooning, spiraling out of control, even though there's been a bursary system since 2018. A lot of this has to do with the fact that the outstanding loan debt for so many generations of South African students before 2017 was never resolved when Zuma just said, cool, we're gonna have some free higher education, but we're not, not actually gonna forgive or cancel the historic loan debt. But a lot of it is also still now because systemically it is so expensive to be a student and this fast is not doing enough. In the 2017-2018 academic year, total student debt for South Africa was estimated to be 11.3 billion rand. And in the 2021-2022 academic year, that was estimated to have gone up to 16.5 billion rand total shared debt. In April 2023, we learned that NISFAS had paid out 5 billion rand to over 40,000 students from 2018 to 2021 who were not eligible 
for NISFAS funding. Again, 5 billion rand to 40,000 students or accounts of claimed students that were not eligible for NISFAS funding. And I say accounts of alleged students because it was also found that the NISFAS IT system is incredibly easy to hack into and exploit. And so many people have been using this failing system to just take money from the program when they aren't in university or don't qualify. And it turns out NISFAS hasn't even implemented a system that checks that the payments that students are getting match the allocations of funds that they were supposed to be awarded, not since 2017. They haven't even put a system in place. And now there's gonna be a special investigation that's gonna take like 18 months, hopefully get it before the end of next year. But in the meantime, what's happening? In July 2023, just a few months ago, NISFAS rolled out their new bank card system where there was a special bank card that each student would get and that bank card was supposed to be used to access the allotted funds from NISFAS to the student. This was supposed to deal with the problem of students having to go to universities and the universities get the money from NISFAS and then the students have to get the money from the universities. This was supposed to make it simpler. But what do you think happened? Well, immediately, Many students couldn't access their funds. Many students were underpaid. Many students were overpaid. And then it gets even more unbelievable because OUTA, which is the Organization for Undoing Tax Abuse, they found that these students were paying radically higher bank fees than they were supposed to be paying for this exact new program. On a banking fee per month, they would be paying 29 Rand on a deal which is for most people 10 Rand. They're doing these transactions because they don't have money. They're doing these transactions because they need to go through this funding system and they're being forced to pay these exorbitant banking fees just to access the money that they're only getting because they don't have money. So then the four service providers that NISFAS had picked to pull off this new direct banking system operation, they were investigated. And it turns out only one of them, one of them I had to read to check, only one of those four service providers has a banking license. So that was all July, 2023. August 2023, students protest. Obviously they do, and they hand over a list of demands to the presidency, and one of the first demands is get rid of this new ludicrous direct banking system. In September 2023, NISFAS is called before parliament, obviously, to be grilled. And now, just now, October 2023, CEO Andile Nongogo is fired because the IT system is a mess and prone to failing, overpaying, underpaying, not paying at all, being hacked and exploited. And because it turns out it seems as though these four service providers were dodgily selected. They didn't go through the correct procurement processes. There are rumors and allegations that they were handpicked by the ex-CEO, although he now seems to be claiming that somebody else at NISFAS handpicked them. This is where we are now. And students aren't getting the money they need to eat. Students aren't getting the money that they need for textbooks. Students aren't getting the money that they need for travel. And it's just staggering to me and deeply upsetting how many victims there are of a systemic rotten failure that has been like this for decades, riddled with corruption, maladministration, neglect, active evil from people in NISFAS, probably people in the government, because let's be honest, NISFAS reports to Bladen Zimande and Bladen Zimande's whole ministry of higher education. They have to take responsibility for allowing this to happen. It's their one job. This is the one program that is supposed to help South Africans who are vulnerable and need a financial aid to get the opportunities they deserve based on the work they've put in, the marks they've got, and the talent that they've exhibited to have better lives. And yet, I just told you what's happened in 2023. And it reads like a disaster novel. So that's the issue with NISFAS. Thank you for watching. I know that it was a horror thing to sit through, but it's important that we try to understand because this is such a crucial system that is supposed to be doing so much good. And thank you also to the editors of this show who are gonna bleep out all of those swear words. But the truth is that the best way to describe the situation is that NISFAS is fuff. And it should be one of the 
top ticket items of the next election. Every single political party should be talking at length about how they're going to fix this system and how they're going to try and turn it around. And so politicians, if you're watching, if you hate watching this show, because it's not always great to be a politician hearing what this show in particular has to say, talk about NISFAS, make it a big issue and try to make it an agenda that can be fixed. We need this as a country. We deeply, deeply need this.